Frog pumps are an amazing glute exercise. They're very safe when done right. They lead to very high glute activation levels. There are very effective ways to load it. And in around one of five people, due to individual differences in hip anatomy, it lights up their glutes like no other exercise. I'm one of those people. Nothing works my glutes as well as frog pumps. I love body weight frog pumps. I love dumbbell frog pumps. I love Smith machine frog pumps. I love partner frog pumps. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to frog pump. I'm gonna break down the science for you. And I'm gonna show you how we do it at glue lab. Okay, frog pumps. First, let me give you the history. When I was coming up in the fitness industry, a guy by the name of James Smitty Diesel, he came up with a very interesting hip thrust variation. He trained male athletes and he'd have like a triangle and he'd have his guys put their feet on the triangle, their knees would be splayed out and they would do banded hip thrusts that way. I remember one day he said, hey, you know, can you measure this? Can you measure the glute activation? Because my guys are loving it. So this was back in probably like 2013, I would say. And I remember looking at it going, that looks stupid. Thereby doing exactly what people do to me with my exercise. They look at it, they go, that looks stupid. You know, powerlifting bros, they'll look at my stuff and they'll be like, that looks dumb, just squat, just deadlift. Don't put your back on a bench and hump the air. Quit doing your, your sissy abduction movements and just squat like a man. <laughs> You serious? I hate that attitude and I did the same thing to Smitty. And what's sad is I really respected Smitty. He was one of the top three most innovative guys in the industry in my opinion. So he's kind of the founder of the frog pump, but he didn't name it that and I forgot all about his variation. And one day I'm reading a research paper and it's talking about how hip abduction and hip external rotation both increase glute activity compared to staying in neutral. In the study, they were prone. They were laying face down and it looked weird. And I thought that would be really weird doing a kickback trying to abduct and externally rotate it. It just didn't look natural. So sitting there, you know, the wheels were turning and I'm like, I wonder if you could do that supine. I wonder what that would look like if you flipped around. So I immediately went out to my garage, got on my back, put my feet together and started bridging. And I was like, oh my God, this works great. I remember I had a friend visiting me. We were supposed to go to dinner and I'm like, hey, will you record me real quick? I'm gonna post this video to YouTube. The date was June 3rd, 2015. And within 20 minutes, I had posted the video to YouTube and wrote up a quick blog post about it. And people People went crazy. People went crazy over the frog pump. I couldn't believe it. Back then we just did body weight and I got better at better at frog pumps. And I remember getting to a point where I could do a couple sets of a hundred reps. And so a lot of popular women back then started doing them nightly, you know, like a few times a week, they'd throw in their two or three sets of a hundred frog pumps. Now I should mention that I don't feel frog pumps until like rep 60. And then from like 60 to 80, it's burning so bad. And then, and then if I go from 80 to hundred, it's like, the most excruciating burn I've ever experienced. What's interesting about this is that, pretend I never saw Smitty's variation, this would have been one instance where research drove innovation in the field. You know, usually it's the other way around. It's we people in the field, the trainers, the coaches, we figure stuff out and then the scientists decide to study that. But this time I got the idea from a research paper and it caused me to think of something in the gym. <laughs> Pretty cool because it rarely works that way. Interestingly, I was left with a dilemma. Do I call these frog pumps or do I call them like butterfly pumps? You might have went with butterfly pumps if your legs are splayed out in a butterfly position, but I went with frog pumps and I don't regret it. Check out these grilled frog legs here. Look at the glutes on these frogs. Clearly the frog pump works. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> that was a joke, but frog pumps do have jacked glutes. Now I want to tell you about the craziest glute pump I've ever achieved. So back in that era, this is, uh, this is, Phoenix Garage Gym, Phoenix Glute Lab. I made a really funny post. I would basically have my girlfriend at the time stand over me and film me while I looked straight in the camera and did frog pumps. And I just lock eyes with the camera, wouldn't blink and I just do frog pumps. And people loved it. And I wanted to do it to this song, Call On Me. And the reason why is because the video for Call On Me had this guy in like an aerobics room doing all these sexual moves. They were doing glute bridges and things like that. And I always liked the video. So I downloaded that song, but I think it was like the techno remix version because it took a long time for the beat to drop. So I get down on the floor, you know, I play this song and I have my girlfriend standing over recording me and I'm pumping away, waiting for the drop. And I get to like 120 reps and I realize, man, I undershot that big time. So I redid it, got back down on the ground, fast forward the song, and 
I did the same thing. I undershot it and I ended up doing like 120 frog pumps and the beat still didn't drop. And it's nice because when the beat kicks in, I can just frog pump to the beat, you know? You know, like boom, 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 boom. Just one frog pump a second, you know? So I did it a third time. This time I nailed it, but once the beat kicked in, I wanted to do more reps. So I ended up doing about three sets of 120. And I got up and my glutes had like locked shut. I couldn't, I couldn't walk. I had to walk twisting side to side because my hip wouldn't extend. My glutes were that pumped. And to this day, it's the craziest glute pump I've ever achieved. As the frog pump climbed the ranks and got more popular, you'd see the comments like, oh my God, these are amazing. Oh my God, I can't, can't believe how effective this is. And then I started to notice people being like, I don't get it. I don't feel these. Am I doing something wrong? Now, I will say that probably around half the people that tell me they can't feel them, they just need adjustments with their form. You know, I need to work with their stance, their level of abduction, etc. And I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But around a third of people, just don't feel frog pumps, no matter what they try. And it's not their fault. It's not that they're doing it wrong. It's due to their hip anatomy. I like to use my client Kiana as an example because Kiana has incredible glute development. When she squats, you know, when she hip thrusts, she takes a narrow stance and she actually likes turning her feet inwards a little bit. But she walks that way. She has a natural kind of hip internal rotation and you can, you can actually feel when you palpate, you can feel her glutes working way harder this way compared to when she has a wide stance or when she turns her feet out. So abduction and external rotation doesn't work for her hip anatomy. Whereas with my hips, you know, I walk with my feet turned out. My whole family does. My hips are externally rotated naturally. So the frog pumps feel so good. They feel so normal to me. They feel so natural to me. So it's the same with squat stance. Some people like it wider than others. Some people flutter their feet out more than others, but it's even more pronounced with bridges. So if you're one of those frog pump non-responders, just don't do them. They're not for you. But before you conclude that, please try a few things which I'll show you in a little bit. Now, this was over five years ago now. A professor at ASU, her name was Erin Pfizer. She and I collaborated on an experiment and we were gonna publish it, but I'm just too scatterbrained. I don't know why I don't publish it. I should now. You know, we got ethics approval. We just need to write it up and publish it. I think it'd be a very useful study to publish, especially in physical therapy, but it also probably has ramifications for hypertrophy training. All right, so here's what Aaron and I did. We took 13 highly trained women, you know, these were my clients. They have at least a couple years of legit training experience. And we had them do six different types of glute bridges, okay? We had electrodes on the upper and lower gluteus maximus, and we had them do 10 reps, and we looked at the average electromyographic activity, the average EMG activity throughout those 10 reps. We had them do a normal stance, which was hip width. We did a normal abducted where you took your normal stance but you let your knees come out a little bit. We did a wide stance which was twice hip width or double the width of the normal stance. Now we also added a band to that and did banded wide stance. This was a mini band placed around the knees. And then finally we did frog pumps, feet together, and then max contraction where you take your normal stance and then squeeze your glutes as hard as possible. Now I would have predicted that the max contraction variation would have gotten the highest upper and lower glute activation because you're squeezing as hard as you can. But interestingly, that wasn't the case. The wide banded variation got the highest glute activity because you know, you're pushing out against those bands. Apparently that exceeds what you can do on your own when you squeeze. So upper gluteus maximus was the wide banded followed by max contraction, which makes sense. Out of those six variations, one of them involves resistance, you know, with the band. Another involves squeezing the muscles as hard as possible, kind of artificially using the mind muscle connection. And the other four are just normal stances, you know, you know, narrow stance, narrow abducted, wide and frog pump. So with the unweighted normal stances, frog pumps top the chart, okay? Frog pumps for upper glutes beat out the wide stance, which I wasn't sure if it would. It beat out the narrow abducted stance and it beat out the narrow stance. Now for lower gluteus maximus, max contraction topped the charts, but then frog pumps were in second place. So frog pumps beat out the banded variation and they also beat out wide, abducted, and narrow stance. So out of the four different stances without using resistance, frog pumps appear to be the best way to bridge. And the least effective way to bridge, at least on average, is a narrow stance. Now I've done this drill at probably 50 seminars 
in the last decade. And I have people try out all sorts of stances. And probably 30 of these times I've had like 100 people in the room. You know, every time I give a seminar, I have people do all these bridge variations and I say, raise your hand if you like this the most. Or raise your hand if you feel this more than the last variation. And I've done it so often that I could predict around a third of the room will raise their hand on this one. You know, two thirds of the room will raise their hands on this one. And this drill is so powerful because it shows you the importance of individual differences and tailoring exercise selection to the uniqueness of the individual because what you'll find is with 100 people, the results are all across the board. You know, you have some people who the narrow stance is their favorite variation, but it's only like 10 out of 100. You know, a lot of people, wide stance is their favorite variation. They feel that in the glutes the most. Some people like narrow abducted. And then you'll get around 30 to 50% of people who say the frog pump was their favorite variation. But then you say, you know, how many people felt that the frog pump was their least favorite variation, where they felt the glutes the least? And you get a lot of people raising their hand. And, and that's because it really targets people with certain hip anatomies. All right, now I'm gonna go through the technique, okay? So you're gonna start on your back, okay? You're gonna put your feet together and you're gonna pull your feet close to your butt. I see a lot of people doing it with their feet far away. You don't want that. You'll feel that more in the hamstrings. You want your feet dragged back towards your butt, okay? Now you can put your head flat on the ground, but I like it more when you tuck your chin into your chest. And if this fatigues your neck muscles, you can just elevate your head onto a BOSU ball. I always joke that this is the best use for the BOSU ball is for frog pumps. And the reason why we tuck the chin is this prevents you from hyperextending the spine. All right, now the most important thing is your level of hip abduction, okay? If some clients that can take their legs all the way to the ground, it's almost like they could do like a reverse push-up type thing, lift their butt off the ground by abducting. Even if you can go that far, you don't go that far, okay? You use about two-thirds of your available abduction range of motion. So say your legs can go to here, you bring them up and you go from about here. But this is one element that you really need to experiment because everyone's different. Some people like to abduct more than others, but you're not, you're definitely not going to the maximum here. Now I kind of do two different types of frog pumps, you know? I do them where I kind of just pump away and I may not get full hip extension on every single rep, but I'm using repetition to get a huge glute pump. The other way is to make sure you get total full hip extension on every rep and you kind of squeeze extra at the top. It's almost like a little pause. Now I don't pause for like a one second count, but you, you just make sure you top out on every single rep. And when I do it the first way, my sets might be 100 to 120 for the first set, then you know, 80 to 100 for the second set, and then like 60 to 80 for the third set. Right? I get more reps. When I do it the second way, I might do like 80, 60, 40 it decreases the reps I can do by about 20. Now, as I said earlier, you won't feel your glutes during the first like 30 reps. You know, if you're conditioned, you're used to training glutes, it's gonna take some reps, but don't worry, before the set ends, you'll likely be burning like crazy. Now, it helps to have your head on a BOSU ball or just be on a, a surface that has a lot of friction. If you start sliding backwards, then your leg angle opens up, your knee angle opens up, and then you start feeling it more in the hammies. So sometimes you have to readjust and bring your feet back in towards your butt. So body weight frog pumps are great, but what's even better are loaded frog pumps, and I'm gonna show you the three main ways we load the frog pump. Okay, the first way is with a heavy dumbbell. Now, this fascinates me, okay? I can do a 150 pound frog pump for about 60 reps. What's funny is so can my clients. Women tend to have crazy glute endurance. You know, I can hip thrust more than most of them except Carly, but they can match me in frog pump reps, even with the 150 pound dumbbell. Now I'm gonna show you how to get in position with a heavy dumbbell. I first thought of this back in a Phoenix gym that had 150 pound dumbbells and I hated getting this thing onto my lap. So I realized if I just had the dumbbell stacked vertically on the ground, I would twist my body onto my side and then roll back into position and let the dumbbell fall across my lap. And then same thing with dismounting it. You just roll it over, lay it down, end over end so it's stacked vertically. And this was a game changer because now I have women doing heavy frog pumps. I had Carly, I had Sarah, I had Hannah, I had Ashley, I had Kareen. That's six different ladies that could frog pump 150 pounds for 50 plus reps. Then one day I'm sitting in glute lab and I figure out a way to do glute bridges off the Smith machine. You just do them off a bench and it dawned on me, why don't we frog pump that way? At that time, the Smith machine frog pump was born. Now, there are vertical Smith machines and then there are angled Smith machines. When you hip thrust off an angled Smith machine, you want the bar moving this way, moving forward as you come up. So if it's angled this way, you put the bench here. With frog pumps, 
if it's angled this way, you lay this way. You lay the opposite way as you do with hip thrusts. Because when you're frog pimpa, as you come up, you're gonna the bar will come towards you a little bit. And I actually prefer the angled Smith machine over the vertical Smith machine for frog pumps. And my girls got very strong at these as well, you know? You know, they might bust out a plate on each side for a set of 50, two plates on each side for a set of 30, and then three plates on each side for a set of 15 to 20. But my squat is freakishly strong. I bet Carly could do three plates on each side for 50 reps. I think I do 35 reps with six plates for a couple of sets. And then I move up to four plates per side and bust out 20 reps. And if I just do those two sets, my glutes are so pumped, I'm walking around the gym like Frankenstein. So the Smith Machine Frog Pump was a game changer. And then during COVID, I started prescribing partner frog pumps to people. Now with the partner frog pumps, you lay down on a bench, you have someone straddle your hips, but you wanna make sure you're frog pumping their whole weight. So the partner can kind of put their hands on the, on your knees if they want to stabilize themselves. You want the partner to lean back a little bit, but they're gonna lift their legs up and you're gonna hold their legs while you frog pump. I know, I know. Now I've topped the charts. <laughs> Every year I outdo myself, right? First it was hip thrusts, then frog pumps, then some of these abduction movements, like the band supine hip abduction. Then it was the partner hip thrusts and now the partner frog pumps. It can't get much more raunchy than this, I get it. But seriously, I think we all learned during the quarantine that it sucks not having a gym. And if you have a partner, you know, say that you have a girlfriend that weighs 130 pounds, I can frog pump them for three sets of 50 reps. My glutes are on fire, they're pumped to the max. I don't care if it seems raunchy, if it's your girlfriend, go have at it, you know? And you know, if it's a very strong woman and, and you're with a normal sized man, you can frog pump him. I weigh 250 pounds and my stronger girls can frog pump me for like 30 reps, you know? All right, so please don't judge. I don't care what something looks like. All I care about is helping you get your best glutes possible. So this is the next best thing to having actual weights and resistance. So I've taught you how to hip thrust. I explained the science. I showed you the different methods. Please give frog pumps a try. Do them how I show in this video. You know, use resistance, go to failure and see if you like them, but don't just glance at these and just assume that they're silly like I did with Smitty years ago because most things that get popular get popular for a reason, you know, people like them. But if you don't feel frog pumps and you've done them as I teach them, you've tried my methods, then don't worry about it. Don't ever do frog pumps. And the last thing I wanna mention is safety. You know, since 2015, so for six straight years, I've had people frog pumping like crazy in my gym. No one's ever gotten hurt from them, not a single person. If someone was like, these don't feel good on my hips, you just don't have them do them. If someone was like, you know, I feel these all in my adductors or these don't feel right, then you modify it, you don't have them abduct as much or you just omit it, you don't have the client do them. But there are many people who do like them and there's some people like me, it's their favorite glute exercise, it's their best variation. So that's my problem with some of these people bashing hip thrusts, you know, I can tell they don't really train people because if they did, they'd know that some people love them and they say silly things like it beats up your sacrum. No one gets their sacrum beat up from hip thrusts. At least not my probably 1,000 clients in the last six years. They say it jams your hip joints. No, it doesn't. If it does, you're not doing them properly. You know, people have said, oh, it doesn't, you don't get full hip extension on them. Who gives a crap? It gets super high glute activation. Not every exercise has to have a full range of motion, but in the literature, abduction and extra rotation have been shown time and time again to increase glute activity. So the brain appears to send more juice to the muscles when you're in that shortened glute position where you abduct and externally rotate. I've also heard some people say it doesn't involve hip extension. Yes, it does. You're extending the hips just in a wide stance position. And I've heard people bash EMG and they've bashed sensation and that's just silly, okay? EMG is a very useful tool if you do if you have electrodes on and you do several different variations of an exercise, it can help you home in on the best exercise for a certain purpose, like what activates a certain muscle the best, especially if you have it on the same loading conditions like just body weight for all six variations. And bodybuilders have been preaching the importance of sensation for decades, you know, talking about the mind-muscle connection. Listen to your body, it's gonna tell you what your best technique, what your best form, your best posture, your best stance with and foot flare and things like that. And some people out there say this just works the piriformis. Anyone who says that does not understand biomechanics. You know, this is hip extension. You can feel the muscle contracting. If you doubt EMG, if you doubt sensation, just put your hands on people's glutes and you'll feel them contracting like crazy. And what's nice is this effectively works the upper and lower gluteus maximus in many individuals. So there's no exercise that's for everyone. A third of people will not like the frog pump. Two thirds will, and probably a third will just love the frog pump. It's gonna be amazing for their bodies. All right, that's a wrap. Give it a try and let me know what you think. Now, before you comment, 
I hope people read the rest of the comments and see, because if you're going to say, this is the worst exercise ever, and you read the comments and you have people saying, I love frog pumps, they're one of my favorites, then you're being egocentric, you know? <laughs> I might not like a certain exercise, but if all my clients love it, I'm not going to say it's a crappy exercise. I'm going to say, I don't like it, but I know a lot of other people love it. So in the comments section, I hope to see some people saying, Love frog pumps, been doing them forever. They're one of my go-to, you know, they're one of my main go-to exercises. And I'm sure I'll see a lot of people saying, you know, I just don't like them. I tried them, Brett. I tried everything you said, but I just don't feel them. And that's fine, but don't knock them until you've tried them. Okay, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Please make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Please leave me a comment and make sure you're subscribed to my channel. I got a lot of good things to come in 2021. If you like what you saw in this video and you want to train under my system and principles, then I invite you to click on the link below and subscribe to Booty by Brett and join the thousands of other happy members who are seeing amazing results.